This ball game will boil down to three things. Three things. Number one, the team that hits the hardest and the longest, the team that starts the fastest, and the team is too damn smart to make mistakes. It's too smart to make mistakes, and that team will win without any question. If you take it to them, if you don't make mistakes, and you keep taking it to them, hell, there's no question who will win. There's no question who will win. Now let's go out and do it. Let's go. Yes! <laughs> College football in the United States today is big business and among the most important aspects, certainly among the most dramatic aspects of the American sporting scene. Top teams like Ohio State University, they're called the Buckeyes, will pack stadiums wherever they play and will be followed by millions on television. 95 players in this team, 90 of them on football scholarships, would die rather than lose out here on the home field. And the key figure in these contests between American gladiators is the coach. Here at Ohio State, they've had for 27 years a coach who's been among the most successful and the most colorful of them all. Woody Hayes has become a national figure, famous for his fierce training methods and his tyrannical rages. This is the first game of the season against the Miami Hurricanes and nearly 90,000 people packed into this stadium and millions more watching at home will expect just one thing from the Buckeyes and Woody Hayes. They'll expect a win. <laughs> The game of American football has come a long way from its simple beginnings. These days it's become as complicated as the movement of tanks in a modern armoured battle. And the leadership, the control of the battle, is not with the team captain on the field, but with the head coach on the sidelines. Woody Hayes sees himself as a commanding general. He even studies military history and uses it all the time to provide homilies and illustrations when training his players. He considers only total victory as an end to all this. For visitors like me, it's the complications and permutations that are difficult to understand. All the moves or plays are decided by the coach and the coded number for each one is carried on by a substitute who's sent in after every play. Although there are only 11 men in each team, on each side there are completely separate teams for offensive and defensive play, as well as specialist groupings and players for kicking, running and passing. The pace is fierce and injuries can be brutal. So are the best players those with the strongest killer instinct? Football players are among the most gentle people in the world. Actually, the fellow you want to watch with that killer instinct is a guy who has something to prove. He may be a little fella. He may have a chip on his shoulder. He may be a cripple. And he's going to show that he can measure up, and he's going to do it by cutting the corners. Football player doesn't have to do that. But they must have a winning instinct. Oh, absolutely. Oh, they can say, I don't care whether they win or not. We don't want them. Because we do want to win, because winning is the epitome of team effort. And we must keep that, and we must inculcate that into our football players. Would you use the word indoctrinate? Yes, yes, I would very much. Uh, so many of our liberals are against that word, but I am not. I think so many times we cheat a youngster when we don't tell him what we already know. That doesn't imply that there isn't more for him to learn. But for us to tell a youngster to go out there and block that big tackle, now you go out and find out how to do it, he is going to get thumped royally. Yeah. But if we say, now look, at, uh, you better move with this foot so you can get a good position on him, because he's, uh, watch his stance, watch his lineup, and you can get pretty much of an idea how he's going to charge, and you can counter his charge by the way you line up on him. This is indoctrination. 
But without it, he is going to get nothing done. Now, when he does it that way, and he's pretty successful, he looks back at the coach, and he says, well, maybe I'd better listen. Maybe this coach does know. Down! Cut! Cut! Now, fellas, I cannot understand it. Who do you have to take? That's right. Who do you have to take? That man, did you take him? I went out and picked up him. What? I took my stuff. You're only a senior. I'll be a goddamn son of a bitch. You made this mistake 15 times this fall. Now, you get with it. God damn it, I'm tired of it. You lose us a ball game, and by God, I'll throw you off the squad. He's the guy you got to hit him. He was in there. What kind of player do you look for to bring on to the team? He has to be team-oriented. Usually, he comes from a good home. Comes from a home that has respected him as a youngster. And he's, he's learned to have self-esteem because he was esteemed in that home. And we find that once a youngster learns self-esteem, he can pass it on to other people. You can't respect somebody else until you've learned to respect yourself. So on the whole, do you find uh, that those standards inhibit recruiting from poorer homes, underprivileged families, uh, ghetto conditions? No, as a matter of fact, I, I find good homes wherever I go. The amount of money in the, in the home has very, very little to do with it. The two things that are always in a good home is, number one, the kid is wanted. He knows that long before he can toddle. Number two, there's discipline in that home, and discipline always implies disciples. He believes in those who took care of him and started to guide him. Those two things are always there, and I look for them. Now, not often, but sometimes we ran onto this youngster from this bad home or no home at all. He didn't get to choose that home, and we must be aware of that. I'll take him and give him a double chance just for that very reason. If he's appeared to rise above those circumstances, I want him. I want to help him along. I can do it. But just remember this, you men that are in there, playing your first game, just remember this. The more you work now, the more you think over the job you do, so that in a ball game, the thinking you do is the thinking of no thinking. You don't dare stop there and philosophize. We all know that about football. If you've got to stop and think, well, what should I do now? You're all done. The play's all by you. So these are things we want to be able to do, and you can only do them if you've got alert football players that are really thinking and learning. And you don't just say it to them and they wag their head and forget about it. You keep learning. You keep learning. Hey, Bach, pay attention up here. You freshmen are not listening again. You're not either. You're up here in the king row and you haven't got a shirt on. Don't come in here again without a shirt on. That goes for you and everybody else in here. Wear a shirt. It's usually colder in here than it is now. But come in with a shirt on. And I get on you because you're in the front row. When a mistake is made, I like to get on to my best ones, not on to the rinky-dink kid that's sitting in the back row. I like to get on the guy in the front row. That's why I got on Jeff real hard last night, because he's a pretty good football player, too. So wear a shirt. Before every game, every practice or training session, they're strapped and taped. Tape is one of the biggest expenses on the team. They use 3,000 miles of it at a cost of $50,000 a year. <laughs> Jeff Logan is the star running back. At 186 pounds, he's one of the team lightweights. His job is to get the ball and to get it forward. He knows that there are others who will clear and smash the way for him, like Chris Ward, who at nearly 100 pounds heavier, is built like a house and can charge like a bull. Nearly 100 athletes who one day will be lawyers, doctors, businessmen or farmers, but have been recruited firstly as footballers. How long have you been on the team? Four years. I'm a senior this year. And how were you recruited for the team in the first place? Uh, Coach Hayes came to my house and came to my high school to, uh, to recruit me to come to Ohio State to play football. Had he seen you play at your high school? Uh, I don't actually think he saw me play in a high school football game, but he saw films. I think he saw films on me. 
Had you had offers from other colleges and universities? Uh, yeah, yeah. Many? 40, 50. 40? 40 or 50. Why did you choose this one? Because we have the best football program here. <laughs> Did it ever occur to you to try and get a university education without a football scholarship, just on an academic education basis? Well, uh, I don't think I could have done it. You know, uh, it has occurred to me, but I think football is the only way I would have been able to afford to go to school, other than just working my way through, you know, like, like a, a lot of students do. <laughs> my father played football for Ohio State back in 1951, and that was Coach Hayes' first year, so we've had the opportunity to play. Each of us have played under Coach Hayes, so... I don't know if that shows how old Coach Hayes is or, or whatever, but that's, that's kind of unique. And you had offers from all over the country? Uh, pretty much so. I was lucky to be able to go just about wherever I wanted to. I was very fortunate. Weeks before the start of the fall semester at Ohio State, the boys on football scholarships report for training. Last year's players need knocking back into shape, and this year's need to discover exactly what that means. Everybody gets a toe! Yeah. 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 Oh. One, two, three, three, four, five, six, six seven, eight. eight. Hey, yeah, the On the other side. Ready? One, two, two three, 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 four, five, five, five six, six, seven, seven eight. Go! There you go, there you go. Where is this thing? That was my fault, sir. Well, why? Are we going to keep going on all fall? That is my fault, sir. Well, what the hell is the matter now? What is the matter? I seem like he's playing from going to go from the side, so I tried to get out too quick. Well, you get out of there, and you've got to stay in there for the ball. God, that isn't hard on that play. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Come on, let's go. All right, let's get out of there now and make this go all the way. Let's come out of there. We'll have 32. Let's go. They have scores of different plays to learn and perfect, coded movements designed to deceive and pave the way for a rush or a pass. They must know every one of these numbered plays by heart, never confuse one with another. It takes more than strength to do that. You screwed us up just about enough for one day, haven't you? Look it, you better move that middle guard or I'm gonna kick your ass to the ceiling, both of you. I'm gonna see a 52 in there and we're gonna rattle her damn teeth. Now, we are not doing worth a damn in here now. Now, let's get going. Yeah, 52 on two. All their practice games are filmed and in the classroom, the playing and replaying of the moves and the mistakes drive home the lessons of the field. All right, now the center didn't come out of here. There's nothing the matter with this play except in the center forgot to come out and take that back. There's no backer. lesson quite so effective as the one in which every mistake is magnified and analyzed in front of your teammates. All right, now Rick Volley, look, if you catch the ball and fall on your ass. Now, you're not deep enough. You're not deep enough. And that's true of all you fullbacks. Now, get your depth right here to another three to four yards, and then you can catch the ball, and you've already made your first down. Right, you guys sit here and don't learn anything. Yeah, you see what I mean now? Fullback, can you see what I mean? You're catching that ball right on your hip pocket, and you're turning clear around to catch it, and then you fall down. Outside of that, you do a great job. <laughs> Better get him off the body. All right, let's go. First group back up. Come on, baby. Tag the field. Good job. Their training program is one of the most strenuous and carefully calculated in the world of sport. Critics argue that there shouldn't even be a scholarship system where football is exchanged for education. They worry, too, about the overall budget for Ohio State football, which is $11 million. But the team's defenders point out that it still makes a healthy profit, which is used to finance all the other sports in the university. And Woody Hayes believes in education. He himself is the son of a school superintendent and wanted originally to be a lawyer. He served in the Navy and then became a small-town university football coach. 
and for 27 years now, he's been at the top of one of the most fiercely competitive sports in the world. He's determined to stay there. Did you, did you try to block him? And he came right across inside me. Okay, then he had his beat, didn't he? Let's put the son of a bitch down now. 19, let's go. If he wants to fire in there, that's just dandy. If, if they can beat both of our big ends by putting their ends inside, let's just see if they can right now. Let's go. No! Hut! 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 All right, that's a good job there, Tackle. The men Woody recruits, and he was the first to bring black players and black coaches onto the squad, may receive a hundred or more offers of football scholarships. So why do they choose Ohio State as Joe Robinson did? First of all, it was a, a great opportunity for me to get to play here. It had been a dream uh, for a long time to come to Ohio State and play. Uh, as I was mentioning before, uh, I come from a predominantly Caucasian town, and there's a lot of people who said, oh, he can't make it, you know, he, because he's going to be just like his father. My father was had a mental illness, and because of that and because I was black, they thought, well, he's going to be a nobody. And they told me to go, to go to a small school, Joe, you know, go to a small school where you can be the big fish in the little pond. And I said, well, hey, you know, I have enough self-respect that I'm going to go to a school that's large enough to give me the competition that I want on my, you know, the level that I think I can compete on. What do they say when you go back home now? A lot of people are two-faced about it. They say, yeah, hey, I knew you could make it all along, you know, and, and it's really funny because, you know, the same people that were sort of stabbing you in the back to begin with saying, oh, he's no good, he's never going to be anything, you know, are the same people who come and say, Joe, when do I get tickets, you know? And uh, it's really weird how that, that, uh, that you know, happens, but uh, I guess it's a fact of life. Now you turned to come back to the line. That's why you didn't go anywhere. Ah, shit, you guys do want to catch a goddamn son of a bitch and ball. I'm disgusted with the whole damn bunch of you. Hey! Who's that running so slow there, Tom Wall? No, that's Joe. Come on, speed, speed. Come on, come on. Tommy Wall beat him. Ah, hell, that's no running at all. Now you get up there. You've had a bad day there, Ernie Andrea. Who was it that jumped in there? Now let's see you beat Store this time. Store, let's see you beat Jim. Hey! Who is it, Bill? Who is it? Who is it? You started to slow him down already since Barwick got hurt. You started to slow him down. You better run. You better run, Jake. Go get, get, get. Since you don't know how to get in a stamp, get your butt up there. He'll drive them until they're ready to drop, and then he'll start more training to strengthen their muscles, to turn tough boys into tougher players, skilled athletes into iron men. Despite all this, many of them suffer fearful damage to ligaments and cartilages and go through major surgery as a result of injuries. The team doctor is a key figure. You've been uh, the overruling factor in Woody Hayes' life for 25 years, I think, haven't you? Yes, I've been with it for 25 years. I'm told that he never, ever argues with a decision of yours. He'll rip bits of furniture up when anybody else checks him, but not you. Uh, the day of a game, he's always absolutely been dependent upon whatever the physician said. Now, we can, we'll have some lively discussions the next morning on both sides as to whether we should have kept a boy out or maybe allowed him to play. But never on Saturday is the expression we have around that. What do you see as your main medical purpose in relation to the football team? I think our primary role is to protect the youngster. I think we have one goal, and that's to be sure that he does not participate if he has an injury that's going to injure him. I think that's the role that we're given by the head coach, too. 
Woody drives himself harder than anybody. When he's left with time to spare, instead of going home to his understanding wife, Anne, he goes alone to the classroom to study training films over and over again. Our kicking game will be done by two or three different men and uh, we'll let Lou find out who those fellows are and where they are because he might want to try to stack the deck if he knew who they were and where they were. And so a good general never gives away any information he can possibly avoid. But, um, the team is the focus of considerable media attention, frequently the center of sporting controversy and speculation. Once a week, Coach Hayes gives a press conference, faces sporting critics, assesses the team's chances in the next game, and explains the mistakes of the last game. Taking a look at the uh, projected offensive line, it's bulky to say the least. It weighs over 240 with Jimmy Moore in the line. On the what average, would you expect us to do? Well, are these men, would you say, quick enough to get can out they move? of your fastbacks? Why don't you ask them? They can move. Your dog owner, that is not a ponderous line at all. And I, well, I don't have to say anything and defend them. They'll defend themselves. They'll step out there and show you can what they can do. They can move. You're doggone right. They run, run, run. They're a bunch of racehorses. They're not workhorses. They're racehorses. If kickoff were at 1.30 this afternoon instead of Saturday, would the Buckeyes be ready today? Some academics at Ohio State University worry that because of the passion that surrounds their famous football team and coach Woody Hayes, the value of their university as a place of learning will be diminished. They point out that there are 17 different colleges here and the 55,000 students can choose between courses which include agriculture, law, engineering, medicine, economics and more than 8,000 other degree courses. It is, in fact, the largest campus university in the United States, and many professors here don't want the football tail wagging the university dog. The footballers may be heroes on the field and around the campus, but they're also students with exams to pass and degrees to achieve. Are a practical school. We are not an egghead. In theory. addition to normal teaching like this, the footballers have the extra tutors. They're called uh, brain coaches and are sometimes resented I by these professors. The president of this university likes Woody Hayes and tries to keep football criticism in check. But even he admits that when he arrived to take charge of what has been called Woody Hayes University, he discovered original James Thurber drawings gathering dust in a cupboard and used them to replace the football pictures on his presidential office wall. It gave Woody's critics even more ammunition. You know, the older I get, and I shouldn't say this because it'll always be misconstrued, but the older I get, the less I care about what they say. I'm sorry, I... Uh, I have to level with Woody Hayes, but I don't have to level with them. And as long as I feel I'm treating these youngsters right, and I'm trying honestly to help them get an education, why, I'm not much, I don't care much what they say, because I'll step into their classroom and do a better job there than they'll ever do on the football field. You've remained one of the less well-paid coaches in the business, although you're one of the best. Is it deliberate in order to I maintain don't know a low I'm profile? The best or not, I've had good players. Honestly, I don't know how good a coach I am. I've never particularly cared. I think I'm a terribly lucky coach. You give me the same material as anybody else, I think I'll beat him on my luck, if nothing else. But um, I, uh, well, frankly, the reason I've never worried about money is because I'm afraid money would spoil me. If I started to think about, well, now how my investment's coming in this stock or this sort of thing, or I've got to go out and make speeches here and there, first thing you know, I won't be coaching well. I get real hammy. I don't want to do that. Because I want to stay in coaching and feel honestly that I'm doing the best job I can do. When I can't do that, I've got to get out. Philanderer, that's a philanderer, a fellow who makes love triflingly. All right, in other words, he just about take on any gal that comes down the street. <laughs> the coach is genuinely concerned, as a teacher, about the lack of vocabulary in high school graduates. So all the freshmen volunteer, whether they like it or not, for his own Sunday morning classes on word power. Spell it now. A P A T H E T I. Oh, no, all right. That's a good word. All right. And it comes from another prefix. 
You know what A means? That's sort of a shoulder shrugging word. Huh? Away from. Away from. And boys, I don't want you on the football field if you're going to show any signs of apathy. Apathy. Right there. And avoid it like the plague. Avoid it like the plague. It's the damnedest thing in the world, and you'll run on these guys this fall on the campus. Yeah, why get up nowhere? Why play football? Yeah, you work too hard. Why do that? Yeah, come on and have a joint with me. And sit there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and hell, he'll sit there and look at his shoe for an hour. Yeah, and he's thinking great thoughts. What the hell he's going to do? You think I'm kidding you? I'm, I'm not kidding you, am I? And those people are apathetic as hell, and they're going nowhere. No. No. And there are a hell of a lot of people, and they take a lot of people with them, fellas. They take a lot of people with them. Because we all have a tendency to be lazy. And I don't know whether it's body chemistry or mind or whether it's a combination. It has to be a little bit of both. We all have a tendency to ease off at times. That's why you need good teachers and good coaches to push you a little bit. We all have to be pushed. The fact I'm a football coach, it's a competitive thing. I despise for people to beat us. That's why when I get good football players, I'm not going to let somebody else beat us. Because I'm cheating myself and I'm cheating my players if we don't get the best out of them. If I let you come here to college and flunk out of school, I'm cheating you because I'm older than you are. I know a little more about it than you do. And I know just going through this silly little book here helps enormously. If you only pick up one word today and learn to avoid that word like the plague, and you'll see him all over the campus. He'll be all over here. And he is never the guy that's done one damn thing to civilization. Not one thing. Not one thing. The Ohio State Marching Band, with its strutting drum major, has for generations been a feature of Buckeye football games. The musicians and musical director are all enthusiastic volunteers selected at tough auditions for what's called the grandest band in the land. They and the cheerleaders practice regularly and hard. They know they're as much part of the game as the football players themselves. Woody Hayes has frequently told them so. the block here and then right out here. I don't mean down here. I mean right out here. Then as soon as you get outside of that guy, go in and start squeezing to create a scene right here. The college football season is dramatically short as well as grueling. This highly trained team will play only 12 games in a year. As the first game of the season draws near, the pace increases. Today there is a scrimmage, a full practice game played between themselves. It's their last chance before the real thing against the Miami Hurricanes. You get out here. Get out here. Get out here. Are you with me now? You got I'd like to get films on that today. Pressure! Quarterback, you cannot be that deliberate! You cannot be that deliberate! For God's sake! Go back there and stand like you got all day? Nuts! In the practice game, nerves are tense for both the players and the coaches. Woody Hayes' tantrums and rages are famous. He's jumped on his watch, punched pressmen, attacked referees, even blacked his own eyes. But he won't let his players do the same. Both of you are off the field. Who is this? Who's the other one? Get off the field. Who's the other one? Who is the other one? Who was it? Wah? Shut up and get off. Were you in on it? 
Uh, I've always been a high-strung individual. Maybe that's my artistic temperament tearing loose because I've never had much artistic <laughs> ability one way or the other. But uh, I shouldn't do that. I can always console myself with the thought that at least I put the worst side before everybody. I wish everything brought as much credit and as much teamwork and loyalty and just outright good, honest fun to the university as football did. Yeah, I wish everything did that. We'd have a much more wholesome attitude toward a lot of things around this university if they did what football does. Now, I say that publicly, and of course, a lot of people resent that, but I don't much care. You, for instance, would not let any of your players go to uh, the Playboy headquarters in Chicago That's if, they, right. if they were picked for that team. Because those people are trashy. I don't, I don't go for people like that. No. And they don't run a, an honorable program. Heck, one year, they picked us, I think, last in the league or something and picked another team first. The other team didn't win a game because I didn't let her players go there. No, uh, we don't need stuff like that. Mm -mm. You let a youngster go up there and get into trouble, I, I would feel accountable for it. So well, let's just not even talk about people like that. They don't deserve to be put in the same level of the highest state football. That may sound sn snobbish. If that's the case, I am snobbish. Because I try to make something from Ohio State football that people can look up to, and believe me, they do. Evening before a game, at home or away, the players always go to the movies. They'll spend the night in a motel, deliberately kept apart from the distractions of college social life. Shepherded by the coaches and the trainers, dressed in their Sunday best, they've entered now a carefully calculated countdown period, leading up to the game. Is there any particular kind of film that you like to choose for this oh, occasion? Oh, yes. We like uh, some of those old Western movies, something like that. We don't want anything with too much laughter in or anything like that, but it's difficult to get uh, wholesome movies anymore. It's quite difficult. What do you mean too much laughter? What would be wrong with having the team fall about laughing on the night before a game? You know something? I've never seen a man make a tackle with a smile, even a smile on his face. You just don't laugh your way to victory. You just don't do it. So you want movies that will put them in an aggressive, meat-eating mood? Oh so. yes, 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 we do. What would not be wholesome? Easy Rider, for instance? You know something? You picked it. You picked it. We were up at Minnesota, and I didn't go that night. When they got off the bus, I got one look at them, and it was obvious that something was wrong. And I spent over two hours talking to some of those kids yet that night, because what it did with them, it challenged their sense of values to the extent uh, they began to doubt the things that are worthwhile. And uh, it was bad. It was downright bad for them. And I spent a lot of time with them yet that night. Joe Lebro, Mark Sullivan. Mark Sullivan. Oh, you all ready to get the road? Oh. All right. Good night, man. You got a heating pad? Yeah. All right. See you in the morning. Yep. Good night. Back in the motel, they still keep to a pattern. They've been shown more football training films, given their last urgings about tomorrow's game, and now, at 9 o'clock, it's bedtime. And in what may seem a contemporary version of the old army song, Kiss Me Goodnight, Sergeant Major, Woody Hayes visits every player personally. He does so deliberately. He's never missed this ritual. You don't have that idea, Luther. Did you bring your words of power book with you, Luther? Oh, shame. It's a little personal touch. I don't think we've had a kid break training in 27 years. If you have something you want to say to a youngster, now's a good time to say it. And uh, it sets the tone, really. And it's a tradition with us now. And who's going to make sure that who gets a good night's sleep? I'll take care of you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'll see you about 845. Good night, man. Good night, man. The day of the game. The players have breakfasted together, taken a walk together, and prayed together for victory.
For the town of Columbus, which critics sometimes unfairly say has yet to discover America, football is a big passion. It's also big business. The crowds who follow the fortunes of the Buckeyes and the supporters of the opposing team always have money to spend. Hotels, restaurants and shops depend on it. Players may rely on wealthy supporters who use sponsorship and donations to help out with their expenses, but the town itself relies on the direct connection between winning and spending. Winning is good business. Many of the players are already heroes to the crowd. Their previous performances talked about and praised, their chances in future games analysed and criticised. But mostly the crowd know and recognise not the players, but the coach. For them it will be his game, his defeat or victory. Woody Hayes is the team. get off to a fast start and everything you do you put pressure on them particularly when that big slim big guy goes back to pass Eddie Beeman you rush your butt off in there and when you get a little tired we'll put Sullivan in let him go a few plates and then you can go back in but I'll tell you that will do more damage to their pass attack we know what hurts our pass attack when they get to our passer now get on that damn passer don't give him a chance to pass and don't give a sucker a break. Never give him the big one. play for an hour, but with time out for stoppages and television commercials, the game will last two to three hours. Now, all the practices, all the lessons, all the replays on film are behind them. Better have robots for third and two. Third and two, want to get robots? During the game, Woody is in direct and constant contact with his assistant coaches in a tower above the stadium. They will decide and call each play down the line. Woody may argue or overrule them. He's still the man in charge. They're coming after. Hey, George. Here they come. They got all eight of them coming this time. All right, be ready, Robust. Robust. The game isn't going well. Then, to make things worse, Jeff Logan, Woody's star player, is injured. 
injured player is Jeff Logan. We got the middle guard getting out. Knee injured player for Miami is number 79, Don Latimer. Hey, Rick, come here. The Buckeye supporters are stunned. It's a disaster, but not a foul. There's rarely dirty play in a Buckeye game. We have a reputation for being the cleanest team in college football. And as a matter of fact, in our league, I insist that the others stay clean, too, or I'll rail and raise holy thunder about it. And I'll get it straightened out. Because I found this, the matter of reprisal is a vicious thing. In other words, if there's dirty football played against my players, what do you think is going to happen? They're going to go right back the same way. And that's what happened between nations so many times. And the reprisal is vicious as it can be. And that's why we just can't let it happen in American college football. And it is, it's an enormously clean game. time but in the locker room below the stands there's no time for congratulations the Buckeyes are playing well but not well enough for coach well, look, Hayes look at fellas here's something we've got to do a better job on the backs listen to me there are going to be a lot of times you aren't going to break out of there but you gotta get your consistency so we maintain you get your five or six and drive for that extra yard <laughs> but there are too many times when we don't get that good play on first down. Several times we've come up second and nine, second and nine. Now that's just, that's not good football. Now we damn near have to go to pass. I don't give a damn. All right, now what play have you got? Many of these players will go on to earn big money playing pro football. They may be getting an education through football, they're also getting a reputation through playing. But Jeff Logan will be out of the game with a cracked ankle for at least three weeks. All right, come on, come on, shut up now, get the play. Let's see your, uh, let's see Herman on the mid-back. At last, the Buckeyes score, and they still have a conversion to kick. It's unusual for them not to have done better at this stage, but in the meantime, the crowd goes mad, and that at least is usual. won by 10 points to nil, a victory for the crowd, but not an overwhelming victory, not a runaway win in the Woody Hayes style. They were expecting more of a massacre against a team like Miami. Was Woody expecting more from his team? We didn't do too many things badly. We could have very easily have had a couple or three more touchdowns, and maybe if we'd have wanted to go ahead and pass, we could have got him right there at the end. We felt there's a pass we had thrown and probably have scored. But if they'd have ticked the ball and intercepted and tied us, that'd have been a great, great victory for them and an enormous humiliation for us. Now, fellas, this is not the way we're going to play this season. I did it last year and had to apologize to the defense every damn game. They carried us. And shit, they carried us today. If they hadn't played that goal line stand, if they hadn't stopped them about three or four other times, we'd have lost the goddamn football game because we didn't generate a pint of piss that second half. And we're supposed to be in shape. What will you do 
to your players now? They must be pretty dispirited, low in oh, morale no, after no. the ticking off and harassing you again. Oh, no. I don't think you quite understand that. Because uh, kids are buoyant. They snap back. I didn't tear them down that much. But now we'll get pretty doggone serious about this thing. Because you see, worse than that, if I'd have said, oh, well, fellas, don't worry about that. Or we played a pretty good game. We'd never get any better. That'd be it. But this way, we'll get better. What are you going to do now before the next game? Oh, we'll teach, 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 teach. How many thousands of times do you have to be told it? Huh? Jesus Christ, all you need to do? Oh, well, shit. God damn it. Christ, you tell you a million times. Get on outside. Now you get down after and he beats you. Dumb shithead. That's all you are. God damn it, that thing would have gone all the way. When you see him there, oh, God damn him, I'm tired of telling you. By God, my patience is exhausted. Christ, you had him so dead to rights, it wasn't even funny. But now you have to do it your own goddamn dumb way. All right. Now, I want to come in there this time with our... Go for right pass. Hit, hit, blow! There it is. All right, far enough. Christ, you stand there like you like to stand all afternoon. Let me ask you what would happen if you lost for several years running. Oh, would your job fired. be under threat? Oh, certainly. Certainly it would. And it should be, frankly. Oh, should. But after 25 years oh, of coaching no, this no, university, no, is there no more loyalty? In the past. You merely study history to find out what happened and try to fit it into the future, but you don't live on history. You don't live in the past. You don't in football. As a matter of fact, you cut off that day's game almost as soon as you walk off that field on Saturday afternoon. You're thinking about what's going to happen next week. The first, you want to check your injuries. You want to check your morale. You, if you lost, you can't. If you've got a game coming up, you can't bear down too hard in that loss. You can't do it or you're going to lose another one. And you would expect to be fired oh, if you had several losing sure, seasons. sure, sure, sure. I deserve to be fired. That's the way I feel about it. Sure. That's the way it is. You see, football is something you don't get along on mediocrity in football. You've got to be a winner. You guys, I've been bragging about Ricky for two weeks. We know about him, You're damn right. You bragged about him down in the Orange Bowl, too. You're damn right. This guy works out there. Now, you make a mistake, and I'm going to knock you down in front of 88,000 people. you believe me? Well, I ain't that dumb. Now, so I... All right, but here. No, I like the way you work, damn it. That's why I like you, because I like the way he works. He runs plays out, and that's why he's getting so damn much faster. Now, let's go out there and break one on him. All right, let's go. 